guys, it's me again, Michelle, and we're going to be talking about Rocks and Minerals today. So it was a pretty popular event amongst you guys, so I'm going to show you the ropes a bit and I will probably be releasing maybe a video a day, maybe a couple videos a day, so we'll see how it goes. But yeah, so let's get right into it. We're going to talk first about the rules, so we're going to just go over them together, I'm going to make me clarify some stuff so you guys can know what's happening and get get started. So, let's see here. Okay, so, uh, first things first, let's go to the rules. Let's just clarify some stuff real quick. Uh, make sure you guys are all clear on what's going on, how this event works. So, uh, let's see. So, you are to demonstrate your knowledge of rocks and minerals. Pretty straightforward. The event's called Rocks and Minerals, so, yeah. Um, you can have a team of up to two. That being said, you could take a one-man team, but it's not recommended. So, in this event, like most other events, you're going to have a team of two people. We will pair you up based on your tryout scores and how well you do on a lot of events. So, uh, we will let you guys know who's going to be on whose team. But for now, while you guys are studying for tryouts, you're on your own. So good luck. Um, we're, so it's up to a team of two. You get about 50 minutes to take the test. It's not that bad. Usually there are stations with samples. Uh, there's a picture here from the slideshow, and that shows you kind of how it's mostly set up. Sometimes the tournaments won't have so many samples for whatever reason. And so they will bring in, like, a slideshow or something. But usually by those pictures, you should be able to tell what it is. You get to bring a two-inch binder, okay? I have an example right here. Let's see. See, this was my Rocks and Minerals binder. That's how thick it is. This is not full yet, but once it is full, it's going to be thick. So... You get to bring that big of a binder and you can cram as much knowledge as you want into there. Make sure you know what's in your binder though. Because if you don't know what's in your binder, then when you're taking the test, it's going to be a shock to you what the answers are. So make sure that you're making the binder and you know what's in it. Because that is very important when the test comes. So, and that's by interior diameter. So it's not talking about the outside, it's talking about the inside rings, okay? Um, let's see, next, commercially, you can bring a field guide. So those are like those like books you can find at the store. I would not recommend using those, however, because that in addition to your binder is gonna be kind of redundant and most of the time you're gonna have more information in your binder than you are going to have in your field guide, okay? So, uh, yep, sheet protectors, lamination, they're all allowed, um, and they are permitted in both the binder and the field guide. So, there's that. Um, yeah, so if the event features is a rotation through a series of stations, uh, no material may be removed from the binder throughout the event. So, once you're in there, your binder, the rings stay locked. You're not going to open them again, okay? So you need to know where stuff is. You need to have a system that works that doesn't make it so that you have to open your binder. Um, next, uh, each person may bring an unmodified and unannotated copy of the rocks and minerals list, which we will get into later. Guys, you are going to want to have a list of all the rocks and minerals in your binder, okay? That's gonna be very important. Make sure it's there because you can just easily look for your mineral and know what family it is. You can know all sorts of stuff about it. Um, so teams are not allowed to bring specimens or samples. I think that's pretty straightforward. Don't bring rocks. Don't bring minerals. Also, do not lick specimens. That is not allowed. It's not okay. If it's a halite specimen, do not lick it if you think it's salt, okay? That's A, nasty, and B, you're ruining that person's sample, whoever brought it. So don't do that, because that, that would not be good. Um, so yeah, you can bring a magnifying glass to look at crystalline structures. 
Um, you can bring... Um, it doesn't have to be secured in the binder, so that's good. You can just bring it loose. Um, teams are not permitted to bring specimens or samples. Yep, check. And, okay, so now we're going to get into the competition. Um, emphasis will be placed on task-oriented activities. So, this is a list. Listen up. You're going to identify the rocks and minerals based on ob observations like properties and characters. One thing you need to know on this test is you never, ever, ever judge what a mineral is based on its color. There are a few exceptions, but never do that, okay? That is a horrible way to identify something because there are so, so many variations and different ways that they're put together. So just save yourself the hassle and never, never trust a color, okay? We're, get, we're gonna not mess up that way, okay? Um, so yeah, if you think that, ro if you think that, say, azurite is blue, you're probably right, but it could have another variation. If you think that quartz is just clear, you're wrong, because there's rose quartz, there's citrine, there's smoky quartz, there's all sorts of different variations. So yeah, huge thing. Do not judge a mineral by its color. Um, so yeah, uh, you're gonna be interpreting graphs and charts, so that could be something like, uh, a chart like here. The Holy ESRT. Ooh, ha, ha. You, you'll learn about that later, I guess. Do I worship a reference table? Maybe. I'm gonna post a link for that because that is a really good resource. Um, and then we have, um, analyzing data and all that jazz. Um, where possible, participants will move from station to station with a length of time at each station predetermined or announced by the event supervisor. You cannot return to stations, but you can add or change information, uh, while at other stations. So there's gonna be, there, it's gonna be in the room, you're gonna have different stations and you cannot go back but you can change the information so if you have time after answering the questions for one station you can go back into your binder and look for the real answers and write those down um so next the the identification will be limited to the specimens on the list so you're not going to find anything that's not on the list in there they can't do that that's illegal so yeah, don't, don't say that it's something entirely not even heard of on the list, because it will be wrong. So yeah, um, next, uh, it also says that rocks and minerals may be used, uh, different rocks and minerals may be used to illustrate key concepts. So if, um, if they're trying to make a point about, say, uh, sandstone and they bring a different type of rock in that's not on there, then that's okay. As long as your answer is not a rock that doesn't exist on that list, okay? Um, so yeah, they can include up to five additional specimens important to their own state. So, here in Utah, we got a bunch of sandstone, all sorts of stuff. I mean, yeah, so the possibilities are kind of limitless for that. Um... If the identification of a specimen is not possible through observation, um, they will give you some characteristics and properties. They'll also, at some stations, if two minerals are hard to uh, differentiate, they will give you streak plates, which look like this, or they will give you a uh, some tools like a penny, some glass, just to uh, find the uh, hardness of it and to find the streak of it. So, um, then written descriptions as to how a specimen might react uh, were it to be tested with hydrochloric acid may be provided, but hydrochloric acid will not be used to or provided to uh, test it. So there's limestone, it fizzes in hydrochloric acid. If it does, it will probably tell you that, but they're not going to provide it for you because hydrochloric acid is no good. Um, 
And then it says right here, competitors will not be allowed to do a taste test. Do not taste the specimens, okay? There are some in there that if you lick and it has a certain imperfection in it, you could probably like have to go to the hospital. So please do not lick the specimens. It's really a dumb idea anyway. Um, and plus those minerals can be already like differentiated without tasting them. So don't do that. Um, next, uh, we're going to go down the list of things that they could possibly ask. If you want to know more about what they could possibly ask, I suggest looking at, at a practice test. We're going to do one real quick together. Uh, we're going to look at what types of things they could ask and from there we will uh, point out a couple things. So uh, with the minerals, you're going to have to identify them. Um, specimens or images should, be, should show observable properties. So they're not going to give you a specimen that doesn't look like what it is. So if they give you a zurite and it doesn't look like that at all, they can't do that. Um, so, yeah. Uh, other diagnostic characteristics will be provided if that's the case, but usually it's they're not going to do that to you. Um, physical properties, they're going to ask for color. Again, color is a big no. Do not use color unless it's like a very special case. Uh, there's hardness, luster, streak, uh, cleavage fra or fracture, density, specific gravity, heft, and tenacity. And then, so we're just going to go through this a little bit. So hardness, there's a Mohs hardness scale, which I will leave right here. And you can determine them, the hardness of something compared to other things. So if you can scratch it with your fingernail, like selenite gypsum, then it is softer than your fingernail, which is, I think, a two or a three. Um, if you can scratch it with a penny, then it is softer than that penny. If you can scratch it with glass, then it is softer than the glass. If you get a diamond specimen, which is probably not going to happen, or like corundum or something, uh, it will scratch glass. So the glass is softer than that, which means that, yeah, it's harder than the glass, which is pretty tough. Um, so then luster is basically the shininess of it. There's different lusters, which I will put here. And basically, uh, there's like almondine, there's vitreous, there's all sorts of different lusters to know. And you can put all this information in your rock spinder. Like, you can have your most hardness scale, you can have, uh, your lusters, you can have everything you would need to know. Um, so then we have the streak. Um... But yeah, so they will, if if it has a different streak than what you would normally expect, they will give you a streak plate, and it'll pretty much be a dead giveaway most times. Basically, cleavage is if you were to take a mineral and whack it with a hammer, I'm going to put a video here, it will naturally break that way because of its chemical properties. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, fracture is if it just kind of like doesn't really have a smooth way of doing it. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, there's density, which is basically, um, how dense it is, obviously. I mean, if it's a sample of galena, I mean, th that's really heavy. You'll be able to know, like, oh yeah, this is galena because it's really dense. Um, and then specific gravity, they're probably not going to make you actually do the specific gravity, but you need to have that in your binder. You need to have all these, like, properties for each mineral in your binder so that when they ask you, hey, what's the specific gravity of this, you will be able to know. Um, the heft, I mean, it's just like, does it feel heavy? Does it feel light? Um, and then tenacity is basically... So for metals like gold and silver, like natural elements, um, you are going to see tenacity a lot with like the metals. Um, so yeah, basically it's just to have that in the binder. Gold is really malleable and has a high tenacity. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. Um, other special properties that are specific to just some elements uh, they include, uh, reaction with acid, so hydrochloric acid, limestone, it fizzes. Some other, uh, minerals will fizz. 
Um, and then we have fluorescence. So I believe that fluorite uh, is fluorescent. And magnetism, uh, quite a lot of the metallic ones have it. Hematite is magnetic. Um, smell, you can smell them. Don't, don't taste them. Um, but yeah, sulfur has a weird smell. Uh, that's pretty much the only one that smells weird. Um, <clears throat> next you have stuff like taste, which don't taste them. It lists it because when they ask you questions on halite, they will ask, uh, maybe, like, this tastes salty, true or false. But do not lick them. Okay, that's not, that's not an invitation to lick. Okay. Um, then we have double refraction, which is a really, really cool property. One of the minerals does it. I believe it might be calcite. It has a really cool property, and I'll put a picture of it here. Um, so next we have uh, radioactivity. Um, they're not going to give you an element or a uh, mineral that is radioactive. Just to put that out there. But it might ask you questions on samples that they can't give you. I can't imagine what what minerals could be radioactive. But hey, learn something new every day. Um, so, and then uh, the mineral habit. So, it's going to ask you like how it naturally forms. There are some that usually form in a certain way. So, corundum usually forms in hexagonal columns. Um, and then there are a whole bunch of formations here, so I'm just gonna let you guys read them because that is a stinking long list. Um, so yeah, some of them will like form in stars, others will form, uh, cubes, so pyrite forms cubes like this. I brought a sample of that to Club Rush. Next, we have chemi chemical composition. So, uh you're going to need to have the chemical formula on there. Basically, that's all you're gonna need to know about it. Um, they might, they're not really gonna ask you a lot of questions on the chemical composition. The main heft of this competition is going to be, uh, can you identify them and can you get the questions right? And do you have the information in your binder? So make sure you have stuff in your binder about your elements and your minerals. Um, I keep saying elements, but guys, it's minerals and rocks. <laughs> I mean, the native elements, like gold and silver, yes, they are elements, but other than that, rocks and minerals, guys. Um, so, yeah, so talking about polymorphs, polymorphs are basically where um, two minerals have the same chemical composition. So graphite and diamond. They are both made of carbon, they are formed differently, so you need to know why they are different and how they're formed, um, and stuff like that. Also, more orthoclase and microcline are also polymorphs, so know about those two. And then, uh, for only division C, you're going to need to know about the solid solution series, um, and the feldspar ternary programs. You are going to have to learn those yourself because I have not seen those in a really long time. So basically just go look those up. Most of the time you just need to put it in your binder. Just information in your binder and you'll be totally fine. Um, maybe a diagram or two. Um, and then you need to know about classification. Um, so you need to know about mineral groups like feldspars, garment... I just said garment. So you're gonna need to know about mineral groups like uh, feldspars, garnets, and all that sort of stuff. And you need to know the similarities of the chemical compositions and their shared properties. So yeah, you're basically probably just gonna want to say that, get your list out and mark down like, oh, this group has this similarities like uh, the silicas, the, the silicate family all has silicon in them, and on and on and on. Um, so Division C only also has to do silicate classifications and their structures, 
limited to the following groups, which are isolated tetrahedra, chain silicates, sheet silicates, and framework silicates. So basically, you're just going to put that information in the binder. You can look it up on Google. It'll give you a whole list of that. And then you're going to want to put that with your silicates as you start making your binder. Um, a lot of these things can just be Googled. Like how I make my binders, I just entirely Google everything. Most of the time it's right. I mean, you can cross check it if you want to, I guess, but you don't really need to. Um, the methods of formation. So, there are hydrothermal, there's crystallization from magma. There's hydrothermal, there's crystallization from magma. There's evaporites, uh, alteration under heat and pressure. There's all these different forms of uh, minerals. So you need to know, you need to have that in your binder under each element of how it was made and you need to have all these properties like I'm, I've been talking about for the past while. Um, so yeah, next, um, minerals associated with rock forming environments. So things like uh, evaporate minerals in sedimentary settings. So like halite is something that evaporates. So it's basically salt. So it's formed when water evaporates and leaves behind the salt. And then you have mafic minerals in oceanic crust and minerals that form under metamorphic conditions and stuff like that. So make sure you have those in your binder. You need to have under formation. You need to make sure that you have a list of how things are formed. Um, from there, we have Bowen's reaction series. So uh, this is a really interesting thing. I'll put it right here. So it's basically where you have um, it's the relationship between mineral crystallization and the temperature in magma. So in igneous rocks, as it cools, it's going to form crystalline things, right? So if you have basalt, it's going to be a lot more crystalline than obsidian, which cools super fast. And uh, uh, then you'll have things that cool for a really long time in the earth, and those will be your... Um, pegmatites and stuff like that with really large crystallines. So basically it's just a way of determining like how long did it take to cool um, judging by crystal size and stuff like that. Um, and then you're gonna need to know whoopsies. You're gonna need to know the economic importance and uses of the minerals. So that's another thing to just put in your binder. Most of these things guys you're not gonna have to memorize them because they give you the binder. So everything you need to know, you need to have in that binder on a specific mineral. So we're going to go over how to make a binder in a second, but that's how you're going to want to do it. Okay, and then uh, we are going to get into the actual list. And um, so here it is. There's a bunch of different uh, families under minerals. Um, the native elements are all they're, they're all made of just one element. Um, and then they, I mean like the silicate family just all has silicon. Like most of these have similar properties, so just know those. Um, we're going to get into rocks, which is a lot of fun. I'm going to get you guys a link to the ESRT. You are going to want to put it in your binder. It is a New York thing, which I apologize for, but the information here is, n the, the pages that I'm gonna give you is not specific to New York. And you're going to want to know, have these things in your binder because it's so much easier to identify things based on this, which is the ESRT. Ooh ha ha. Um, and then, uh, so there's igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Um, I'm not sure what you guys here in Utah know because I had an entire 8th grade year focused on earth science. So I think we all know the rock cycle, but just in case we don't, we have igneous, we have metamorphic, and we have sedimentary. And you're going to need to know a lot about those. So putting the rock cycle in your binder is going to be really helpful, okay? 
a lot of these things you're just going to have a whole reference section in the front and then you're going to have a big stack of all your mineral pages so make sure you have a lot of things to reference to because you could be asked a question that you've never seen before even even though you practice the entire time you could just get a random question so yeah there's that um we're gonna go switch over to how to make a binder real quick okay so we're going to talk about a little bit how to organize the binder so there are some this was from my division b experience so that's the middle school level division c is going to require a little bit more than what i have here but this is basically what you're going to need so uh, here I have uh, what I put in my binder. Um, this is basically all I needed when I did it. But let's just go through them real quick. So group, uh, you can easily find. Chemical formula, all these stuff you can easily find. Uh, there's a website called minerals.net. That's a really good website to go to. It has everything you could ever need. It has these... Uh, the popularity, the prevalence, and the demand, those ratings I all found on mineral.net, and it's a super great resource, so please use that. Um, you have group, chemical formula, composition, hardness, crystal system, crystal forms and aggregates, uh, specific gravity, rock type, cleavage, uh, fracture, luster, tenacity, color, streak, transparency, environment, striking features, so what stands out about it when you first look at it, um, economic uses, uh, popularity, prevalence, demand, tests, so hydrochloric acid and stuff like that, fluorescence, all that jazz, and common mineral associates, so basically what just list all the stuff you could confuse it with and why it shouldn't be confused with it. Um, and yeah, the spot underneath that, the distinguishing similar minerals, is basically where you just put, yep, can't be this because of this. Can't be this because of this. Uh, that'll just help you out. Usually you won't use it on the test unless you have a really specific example that's kind of tough. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, Alright, so next we're going to talk about how to organize the binder, and I'm going to show you a little example of what some of my binder pages look like. So, this right here is my page on Diamond. This is one of two pages. Um, usually it's a little bit better formatted, but since I moved all of my documents from Google Docs to uh, our special Microsoft system, then my formatting's all messed up. So, bear with me here. Um, but basically, this has a lot more on it. I did update my list, so when you guys are going through uh, looking at practice tests, we're going to go through one together, and we're going to look at all of the questions that you could possibly get asked. But basically, here I had mineral group, chemical formula, common impurities, that's a big thing. You're going to want to know like what could be in this, what could not be in it, like... Here it says, type, common type 1 diamonds uh, have additional absorption in the infrared and ultraviolet. So you're going to want to know all those special properties and what could be messing it up. Because um, you're never going to, if these are nature made, you're never going to get a purely diamond specimen or a purely gold specimen. It's always going to be some sort of perfection. Um... So yeah, uh, you have chemical classification, uh, you have uh, composition, environment, so like where it's found, um, formation, which we talked about before, uh, I did a little recipe of how to make diamonds, uh, you have specific gravity, that's just a number, um, density, most hardness scale, which we talked about, diamond of course is the top of the list, it's the hardest mineral. Um, you have a streak that is white, uh, color, luster, transparency, cleavage, fracture tendencies. I put pictures here that you can find on mineral.net of the cleavage tendencies, and it will show you all those types of things, so you can just look that up. And most of these, uh, most of these binder pages are just made 
through uh, copy and paste every time. Um, and guys, don't worry about it. It's copy and paste. That's what's going to save you the most time. If you're typing out the entire thing, you are going to be working on this binder for a very, very long time. So, yeah, copy and paste is going to be your best friend. Um, next you have fracture tendencies, crystal shape, crystal habits, uh, optical properties, ultraviolet fluorescence, uh, tenacity, distinguishing characteristics, polymorphs, series, um, uses, and then here I went on and on. This is probably a lot. You don't want to have paragraphs like I had here. What you're going to want to have more is like one words because when you're doing stations you're not going to have time to read an entire paragraph so you want to make it as short and concise as possible get right to the point do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars do not use flower language okay we clear on that um so we have economic importance um yeah it talks a lot it's this is diamond so it it's a lot in depth um, there is locality, um, so it, that's like places where it's found. Some tests can ask, like, where is it most commonly mined? Um, for diamond, it's usually in South Africa and places like that. Um, and then you have, uh, just additional stuff. You can put, like, fun facts or stuff at the bottom, because they might just ask a random question and you probably won't know what it is and guys it is so okay to not know everything on that test the goal of science olympiad is to just know more than everybody else in that room for your event okay you're not like trying to be albert einstein here you are just trying to do the best that you can and try and make that best better than everybody else who's taking the test okay so if you don't know the answer to something you try but in you like if it's multiple choice you circle an answer if it's fill in the blank you fill in something random and pray that it get, you get it right but guys at the end of the day you nobody's going to get 100% on these tests okay this is just a please try and do as best you can and sometimes they will give you so hard the tests will be so stinking hard and that's totally fine everybody else in that room had the same amount of time as you to study. So it is okay not to know everything, okay? Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it on Diamond. Um, basically, that's kind of all you need to know, but really. Um, in terms of organization, there's a couple different options. I have these writable tabs in my binder. So for Actinolite, I put a tab with that on it. I put them all in alphabetical order because I'm weird like that. I put all my minerals in alphabetical order, then started with rocks, and then went through alphabetically. You don't have to have a tab for every single one. Um, you could just do it like I did my ornithology binder and just do it like this with one tab per letter of the alphabet. It might be a lot easier. It's just really whatever works for you. Um, and then in terms of splitting up the work between you and your partner, when we actually get you guys, um, in teams, uh, I would love it if you guys would, uh, work together instead of just, oh, this person's really great at this, we're gonna put it all on that person. That's not how it's gonna work. We don't do carrying here. That's a, that's a SIO term. It's... Carrying is basically when you're just having one person who knows everything and another person who's just like a body. They're not, they're just standing there doing nothing, just looking good. Um, so please try and split up the work. Um, it makes it so much easier and it makes your chances of placing a lot higher. Um, and then when you do get a partner, we're going to have you guys meet a lot together because... Uh, even if you don't know them, you're gonna get real cozy with them because you're going to be working with them quite a lot. So, yeah, um, you're gonna want to take some practice tests. You're gonna want to learn how your partnership works. Um, so a lot of the time in my partnership, it wasn't a perfect partnership. My partner, uh, I probably knew more than my partner and 
she a lot of the times was just writing or flipping the binder so that's not a great partnership and we need to we need to make sure that we're spreading the work out evenly so when you guys are making your binder um it would be best if you both worked on a mixture of rocks and minerals don't have somebody just work on rocks and then another person just working on minerals because if your partner can't make it to a tournament, then that really stinks for you because you won't know anything about rocks. So, yeah, please try and split up the work evenly once we get you guys into teams. Um, but yeah, for now, start making a binder. Um, you guys won't be able to make every single page unless you're amazing uh, until before, I mean, before tryouts. So, I mean, in the end, just try and get as much as you can. We're just looking to see who can get prepared the most in the time we give you. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. I mean, we can go over a practice test real quick. Um, so, yeah, let me pull one up. Okay, so we're going to go over practice test real quick. Just last thing in this video, I promise. Um, so this was, I think it's like the first thing that pops up on your Google search. This is the Sayoli, I think, 2012 practice test. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. Um, we are going to start, uh, at the top, because we're not crazy, and start from the bottom. Um, let's see. So on station one, we're going to have to identify the specimen. Now, we're going to look at the properties. Uh, so it's kind of forming a weird shape, most commonly in things like malachite, and it's green. So, uh, malachite is a mineral that has, uh, copper in it, and the copper oxidizes and forms this lovely green. Um, so the specimen is going to be malachite, so we're just going to write that in there real quick. Okay, so the chemical formula. This is where I would go to my binder, and I don't know it on the, off the top of my head. So here it is. There we go. Um, the, the crystalline structure of it. It's a uh, monoclinic stru structure. So there's that. Uh, so what you're gonna ha need to have in your binder is crystal structure. Make sure of that. Uh, green color, copper. Um, the next one is pyrite and so on and so forth and so basically as you can see they'll just give you a specimen and you'll have to answer questions about it so uh like this is some sort of mica i believe it's biotype um and so you would answer all these questions about it uh this is a really good way to find out what to put you want to put in your binder and i would recommend having a lot of pictures in your binder especially on your certain pages. Make sure you know what they look like. Make sure you know what they act like. Um, and then, yeah, just all sorts of stuff. The rocks are kind of tricky sometimes. Uh, most of the time I will just go on Wikipedia and search up stuff like it. Um, I will, I'll just look at the article and see like the topics, like what what properties they have so if you get like say sandstone uh you can also just look at the questions they ask on practice tests but if you want to put more information you could just go to wikipedia look at the uh topics and by the way wikipedia is not a bad source like all your teachers tell you so don't listen to them <laughs> uh just this one case i promise um but yeah other than that i mean you guys should be pretty good to go it's this is a study event, you're gonna have a binder. So basically just, your your binder is your brain, okay? So in this case, you're gonna want to treat your binder well. You're gonna wanna have some page protectors, some dividers, all that stuff, and yeah, I wish you guys the best of luck putting together your binders. It takes a while, and by your first tournament, you're probably not even gonna have it put together. But just keep grinding at it, um, it, takes, it does take time, so. Yeah, I'm going to leave it here. Thanks, guys, for tuning in and watching me blab about rocks and minerals. And 
yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. If you have any more questions, uh, or if you want me to do a video about like certain things like lusters and most hardness scale and rock cycle and all that jazz, let me know and we can work on that. But other than that, it's up to you guys to uh, do a lot of studying. So I'll see you around sometime soon.